Hi there, welcome to Future Journalism Today Live, episode six. And today we got Leo Korsko uh, as a guest, and I hope I pronounced that right, a Danish co founder and editor in chief of Zetland. And um, well, let's uh, bring her on the show and I have to unmute her. Good afternoon, or good evening, or good morning, whenever you're watching. But for now, good afternoon, Leia. Good afternoon, or evening. It's evening. In the or evening, yeah. Great <laughs> to have you on our show. And um, this is Future Journalism Today Live, if you're tuning in for the first time. This is a interactive live show where you, the audience, get to participate via the, uh, the chat, the Q&A. So please put in your questions to Leia or things you would like to share, ideas, tools, thoughts, uh, future forecasts. Doesn't really matter. Um, please do um, put your, your comments and your questions in the live chat and please subscribe to our channel. Welcome. This will be 40, 45 minutes of um, interactive interview with Leia. She will show us some, uh, some interesting features, tools she uses, and she has a lot to say on the future of journalism, how, how journalism should be uh, approached these days. Um, Leia, let me, um, um, let me tell the audience what they're about to expect because we've got some items, although it's uh, it's semi structured. Um, I'll put this on and let me see. Um, so on the show today, obviously um, we have you, Leia, um, the co-founder again and editor in chief of Zetlan, and we'll do some unboxing or live demoing. You're going to show us a Chrome extension which has to do with audio, but more on that later on. Um, Stop it, journalists. You have some advice. I think at least two pieces of advice how newsrooms or journalists should work and what they should be thinking of uh, when it comes to the future. And um, um, you're obviously willing to answer questions uh, from the audience. So uh, welcome, Leia, again. Wonderful to have you on the show. And Hi. for the pe people who don't know you, can you say in your own words what Zetland is? Yeah, so Zetland is a digital news magazine. Um, that publish few stories a day, only two, two, three, four stories a day, but um, but in depth stories that are actually about the important stuff and not about necessarily what happened five minutes ago. Yeah, okay. and, and then we, yeah. Anyways, that's that's the very <laughs> very short version. So you take a bigger of a bigger time span and you you zoom a bit out to see what is actually happening underneath the breaking news. Could you say that? We, we try to help. So, so I think right now, one of the, the, the major problem as a news consumer is where to begin. There's yeah. endless, endless uh, information out there. So the problem is not to get information. The problem is to get the right information and get the information that gives you uh, two things, an overview and an in-depth uh, version of what's actually going on. Um, so we look upon Zetland as your friend in the in the endless noise of information that's out there. Yeah. The friend that take hold hold your hand and takes you through the the information and um, point to what's important and what you should take notice of, and okay, nothing so else. And nothing else. That's all we do. So there's no noise. There's no um, uh, nothing that that we don't think is worth your attention. And, and and at this point you're you're a Danish news company news organization right? Yeah. And uh, you you told me uh, your kids might be walking. Uh, yeah, around. yeah, that's that's what I'm looking to for keeping. Yeah. Is taking an is taking a bread out of the oven, but everything is going. <laughs> that's oh, that's nice. Okay, I actually, think... he can, okay, give me uh, ten seconds. I'll take a break. Okay, and I will tell the audience a bit about the facts about Zetland. That's great. Yeah. So um, on the uh, some some key facts and figures on Zetland. Um, and this was supplied by Leia, most of it um, beforehand. So this is how you uh, write it, but you say it different, you pronounce it differently, different in Danish, Zetland. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, and yeah. you were the co-founder, editor in chief. And I read, I think even on your own uh, web pages and on Wikipedia, it was founded in 2012, but you said 2016, but it was a different yeah. form then. Could you explain a bit? Yeah, so in 2012, the first version of Zetland was a, um, say, a publishing house. We published, yeah. published um, e-singles, so journalism in, a, in an e-book format, and we published yeah. once a month. So we just came out with one in-depth, cinematically told story. 
and they were they were good. They were we we you know we were nominated for a the the Danish version of a Pulitzer for one of them. So so there was wow. nothing wrong with the quality, but but um, but these stories just didn't help people w solving the problem that I just explained. You know, being yeah. your friend in the in the news. Um, uh, noise that's out there. So, so in 2016, we just, we we made a major change and got investors on board and made a huge crowdfunding campaign and then started Sitland that is Sitland today, the a so daily you, a news magazine. Yeah, yeah, it's a daily news magazine. So you pivoted from it. You you didn't call it long reads, right? But you said cinematic storytelling. So you pivoted yeah, from well, that. Yeah, it it was long reads, um, but you know, told told as if in, in the in the in the tradition of news uh, of of uh, new journalism and literary journalism, and we yeah. still use those same kind of techniques telling stories today. But um, but it it was a clumsy format, you know. Also because we we publish it as ebooks, and you can't really interact with an ebook. You can't see who's else. Who else is are reading? Um, what yeah. what is the community around the the, the journalism? Um, how do I get in touch with the person that wrote the story? Uh, all those kinds of things that are great uh, to use in journalism today, you couldn't use in in that format. Yeah, and, and that interactivity and um, um, uh, participation from your audience, from your readers, your listeners, that's very important to Setland, right? And we'll go into that a bit deeper later on, I think. Yeah. But that's a sort of recurring theme with uh, what I read about you and what you think is important. And it's close to my heart as well, uh, coming uh, as a background for, as a user experience designer. So, mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I read that it was founded by Jacob Moll, and I have to look at my notes, Silke Bock and Hakon Mosberg and yourself. Yeah. And you say in your own about page, who all quit their jobs from legacy media to participate in a much needed reinvention of the Danish quality journalism uh, and the business models behind it. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so what did you do before you, uh, in, in 2012, before you joined uh, or founded? Uh, I, I, I had what I thought was my dream job. Um, <clears throat> and it, it was the kind of job that you would, kill for i would kill for when i when i studied journalism I which company did you work for i was a feature writer at politiken one of the great great uh, yeah. older danish uh, legacy newspapers yeah. and it was a and it was a fantastic job and i have uh, tons of good stuff to say about politiken but at that point when we um ended up quitting there was just no real innovation when it came to digital journalism, and we thought, okay, if no one, if no one um, starts, you know, seriously think about how uh, people consume news in a digital world, then our job will finish before we die. Yeah, <laughs> because our job at that point was at at the at the paper paper. Uh, pu yeah. pu publishing news was a paper thing at that point, um, mostly. Yeah. So yeah, so it, it was nerve wracking also because in in Denmark there's there's not a huge tradition for um, entrepreneurship in in the media industry. Yeah, but I think if I'm not mistaken, that the, another Danish uh, innovative um, news newsroom or news uh, organization is Eltinga, which was mm -hmm. yeah. also founded by someone who worked at Politiken before, right? Yeah, pro yeah, 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 Rasmus Nielsen, yeah. Yeah. It, it's, a B, it's a B2B uh, media, it's, it's very clever uh, yeah. in how, how, they, how they build that, yeah. So to give a bit of a, a nod to the legacy media, so they do sort of prepare you to, to make the jump into the innovation uh, and more startup scene, maybe, right? Yeah, absolutely. And you might, and you might still need them. No, well, uh, yeah, we we do, or at least you know, um, I, I think we do. Um, yeah. Also, actually, I, as I as I tell every um, journalist student that I meet, you know, you you have to learn the old way to do it in order to find out how you should do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, well, that's I, that's, a, that's already a good piece of advice. And just looking at the audience, if you would really like to ask a question to Leia on how how she. Uh, why did she quit her job and, and went into this uh, adventure? So please do, or any other questions. But this is a nice piece of advice. So you say, maybe start at Legacy Media first to to 
to learn um, the people show you the ropes until you can make the jump maybe yeah at least or at least i don't know i i i have uh, um, i'm very lucky that i have uh, quite a few young journalists who started out at, at settler yeah. so my advice would not necessarily be to you know to start out in the legacy business but but start out by knowing a craft maybe that's yeah, yeah. trying to get at that's here true. you know you know get the craft uh, yeah. because you, if you don't if you don't get the craft then you can innovate you simply can in you have to have some building blocks um yeah. some kind of knowledge of how stuff are being made in order yeah. to integrate that process um, on, on that yeah, note you can't, you can't skip the 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 boring part yeah That's what ah, you can't skip the boring part it's a good one so uh on that note knowing the craft i think you you have a lot of uh, uh paying members already because you, you told me there are over twenty thousand paying members they pay i think about 1750 euros a month something like that 1730 i think yeah and um you said it's half percent of the entire danish population right no no it's half percent of the adult population adult, okay yeah, yeah the adult population yeah. and yeah. your goal is to reach one percent by which year or which um in two years in two years from now we would like to have one percent of the danish adult population as paying yeah. members of Sydland. yeah yeah and you also got uh, when you launched some some uh, you did crowdfunding like the correspondent in the Netherlands in the same way, right? And uh, um, yeah, we did, but but we didn't succeed on that scale because they had, uh, I as far as I remember, remember at least fifteen thousand uh, members in in that crowdfunding campaign. We had uh, one thousand five hundred. But the thing is that for us it was it was a way to. Um, to show potential investors, look, we're not just four crazy people in a backyard uh, or in a garage. We have yeah. 1,500 people who who believe in our idea as well. So, yeah. so it was very helpful for us in that sense. Yeah, and that's good to know. And you you told me uh, when we sort of discussed this uh, this live show that you met Rob Weinberg, the, one yeah. of the founders of the Correspondent once, and you called him an uncle that you didn't know existed but really liked something that right <laughs> yeah totally yeah it was like you know discovering hey i i had family that i didn't know of because yeah. we 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 saw this issue that was out there this 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 struggle uh people have with um uh, with news today and and news fatigue and wanting to be to know stuff but having trouble getting to to find where where the, the where the important stuff is so, so we, we sort of we had detected that uh, issue and then when we when we found out about Rob and, and his great adventure we were like whoa yeah. that's that's we, we you know um uh what's it called kindred spirits i think it's, yeah, it's, yeah and you found another partner a sort of another kindred spirit in switzerland i presume yeah, yeah republic with the with the k in the end yeah republic they they are on fire as well they are just an amazing bunch of uh great people that launched um I, I wouldn't call it the 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 swiss version of Sydney because they're very much a thing in in their own right but um yeah. but we share a slack channel because sometimes when, when we you know um develop some tool then they use it and vice versa and and i really like that uh, you know just giving each other tips and tricks and um also sharing sorrows and um and and stuff like that with with people who who know how it's like it's the, yeah that that's really amazing so it's 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 only for people who have some sort of same experience in the same sort of industry or is it the slack channel open to anyone who has an interest it, it's only a slack channel between settler and republic okay and that's actually we also have one between Settler and, and the correspondent. Ah, um, it's, just, it's just an easy way to get in touch. Yeah, interesting. Oh, we have a question already, and I'll put him on the um, on the on the live stream. It's Emil Sørensen. One question for Leia: How did you go about funding the project? What was the most important factors of you achieving the funding? A very good question, Emil. Leia, can you answer that? Yeah. So the most important factor was the crowdfunding. Uh, the fact that we were able to get 1500 people to 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 um to crowdfund what, what it was um i think half a million crown uh, crown danish crowns so so the amount wasn't that much but all those people were kind of 
helped us validate the business case um, to potential investors. Um, and then we just, it was just a lot of hard work going around, knocking on doors, um, presenting our investor deck, saying we have this amazing mission and we actually think there's a, there's a business opportunity in it as well. Um, and we got tons of no's, but then we also got a uh, yes from the perfect group of investors. They are, they are very, all in all, I think now we have between, I think it's almost 12 inv investors, but, but back then we had uh, four or five. And, and they are just um, just an amazing crowd. Um, what was their reason for funding? What did they say? Was there some sort of sim similarity in their reasons yes. to do it? Yeah, so it was twofold. Uh, all of them really believe in the mission. They think there's something fundamentally wrong with how news are produced and consumed uh, in, in the old way. And so, so they want to... They, they and and they think it's important for democracy and for society um, to to help fix that. So yeah. so one thing is you know sort of an the idealistic um, 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 reason for for investing, but also they think that you know we we look like people who actually knew stuff about um, running a business. I don't know if that was true, but but it came to be true. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I hope uh, Emil that Leia answered your question. And uh, Emil can't say he's uh, he's more than welcome to uh, to. Here's my son walking <laughs> out of the room. Hi there, Anyways, Emil. You're more than welcome to get in touch if if I, I if you want me to uh, to give you tips and tricks on that. Yeah, well, that's that's good to know. And thank you for already answering uh, these things, uh, Leia. And um, um, let me go back to um, to some facts about, um, about Zetland again. And um, so you do all journalism in text and you started doing that in audio, narrating your the art. Every writer narrated um, his or her own articles and put it up as an audio file, more or less. It, it's a bit maybe uh, un-nuanced as I present it right now. But when did that start to do the audio version of your content? So that started, or that started in 2017. So one year after launch, yeah. we um, we initially thought that we should go into also making some kind of audio at some point. Yeah. But then quite early, we our members told us we like your when we asked them we asked them constantly you know how how do you like Zetland uh, how could we improve what do you miss what kind of features should we build next yeah. and then there was um quite a few who said i like what you're doing but you also write long articles and long articles takes time take time to read um so if if i could get them in in an audio version then i would consume more um, and we thought that was clever, you know, yeah. who, who has, who has 20 minutes to just, you know, lie on your couch reading a story each day. Not many people, I don't, but, but I do have 20 minutes on my bike or 20 minutes while doing yeah. my squashing. Um, so then we, we, we just, to, to start out, start, start just testing, uh, some test versions. Um, and it just immediately took off. And in only three months, we built an app that seamlessly integrates text and uh, audio. And yeah. we trained the, the, the whole newsroom to, to speak and to do, uh, do the, the, the technical part of the, that process. Yeah. Um, and it, just after six months from launching the, text version, the, the test version, um, I think more than 60% of our articles were consumed through the ears. And yeah. now it's, it's around uh, 80%. So we're still a text-based media, um, but but it's text that you read through your ears. Yeah, text that you read through your ears. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's interesting. And you also do a podcast, right, with a host on a yeah, daily yeah. Really yeah, we do, do a daily podcast show, a daily news yeah. show. Yeah, and on top of that comes comes the 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 audio versions of the articles. Yeah, and that's in a uh, app web and daily news podcast, right? And, uh, yeah. yeah. So 
I think you've already mentioned it, but community is very important to you. But what I also read in other interviews or things about Zenland or interviews with you is that the the community within the company itself, with you and, and the team, it's uh, 30 plus members right now, is, is very important as well. Mm -hmm. And I think it's nice to show a few things about how Zenland looks, right? And um, so I, um, I found this video on your website and mm -hmm. let me play it. I hope it's gonna it's gonna load because th these are your employees, right? This is your team, right? Mm -hmm. This is what yeah. you put up on your front page. Uh, can you tell us why? Why this this community is so important? I think every company says it, but how does it work with Zetland? Yeah, so so I think one of the problems with with news in the old world um, was that you you couldn't hear the person behind the news. You could and and therefore you couldn't relate to it. You couldn't connect to it. You couldn't thereby feel it, it i think it's it's harder to to feel um a sense of trust when you can't sort of feel the, that there's a human being behind the product so yeah. for us it's very important and when we stress this all the time that that it that journalism in in, in journalism is a product made by humans Settlin is a is a company made by humans um, and we want you to connect with us because we want to connect with you. And we think that um, uh, this is just a way more meaningful relationship to um, a, a news consumer than just, you know, talking out to a mass of, of an audience instead of actually have a dialogue. And in order to do that, we have to sort of, we have to show ourselves. It's funny yeah. that you show this picture because we did something fundamentally wrong to begin with. When we launched, oh, what is that? that we um, we hired a uh, sort of a very flashy uh, photographer who, who used who, he, he's very very good um, and and um, what he does is you know doing flashy stuff for for, for a glittery magazine. Yeah. So and he took a, a photo of us, of us and we look like that you know very sleek and um, uh, flashy and that just felt really wrong because you, you can't connect to that i think it's uh, it, at least it is it's more easy when you when you look at this group and you can find someone that actually looked like you yeah um, it's your flesh and blood and not too glitzy and and yeah glamour. exactly and and it turns out the more the more we we show who we are the more we tell about uh, also what what is you know what we do wrong when we do when we make mistakes um when when we don't uh, reach our goals, all those story is is also part of being settlers. So they yeah. they have to be told. And when we do that, we actually succeed more than when we try to hide the errors, which is I think the most important lesson we have learned. And that is to to be transparent when it's good. Tell who you are, what what's gone wrong, and what you're trying to achieve, and. Yeah, well, very, very concrete. Two two years ago, we told we we, we always we have always had a, a sort of a a, a, a nice growth settlement. We've always yeah. you know um, more more members from from um, month to month. But yeah. two years ago, we could we could uh, still see that we had to grow faster in order to reach break even. Um, yeah. We wanted to break it. We had to to reach break even because we we still used more money than we um, than we earned, and then we we were just super transparent about that. We told our community, our members, we need your guys' help. Uh, yeah. Otherwise, we have to do something drastic, which was not to fold but to sell settlements to, to probably another media company. And we and we're just super open about that. We need to yeah. grow faster, and you have to help us. And then they, you know, put up posters in their uh, office and uh, asked friends and family to to come join Zetland. And they helped us grow 25% in a month, which made us to uh, break even. So, yeah. and, 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 and I think um, the lesson to learn from that is that we had not, we, we didn't, we wouldn't have reached break even if we had hide the fact that we were in 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 a bit of a trouble yeah and and yeah. so that was a lesson that really sort of gave you the 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 insight that you should share these things more often because that's part of the i don't know if you like the word but the dna of zetland right 
It is, and 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 w once you do that, once you are just super open about everything, you it it's interesting, I think, because then you discover what there's nothing to be afraid of. For, for instance, yeah. we, we tell our churn number, the the number of people that um, leave every month. Yeah number of members who, who leave us every month and that's typically typically a number yet that you would hide as a company yeah but i don't know why what well, there's nothing to be ashamed of you know then do you then share what? that with your with your members do i can share it now it's it's yeah. it's seven it's seven percent yeah yeah so, so and and the reason why i say that is just that it, it, you know, it just dawns on me. Why is it that people are so afraid to to tell all those numbers? There, yeah. There's no reason why you shouldn't be open about them. Because you, when you're open, you connect with the people that you want to help you. Yeah, and I think it all it helps the entire industry if you're sort of being more honest and more fair. Then you can you can lift all uh, the tide for all boats, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah I totally so agree. Yeah. Let me let me show an, uh, an an image of what you have as uh, on the front page. This is how Zetland looks, just to give the viewers a bit of an, a visual impression. So this is, I think, the the, the web based version and your audio app as well on the right, I presume, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then obviously how it looks on desktop. And the next thing is a graph that you um, you uh, you show that the the news impact summit online uh, on audio. And might be a bit small for viewers, but there is a drastic increase somewhere around. What what, what year is that? Could you that, explain a bit what we see? That's two thousand and seventeen. So so I th what you see the the drastic. So uh, actually, this is this is a, a visual version of what I just told about the the um, the audio work. So yeah. you can see the the graph starts when we launched our test version of uh, of the audio listening uh, to to articles yeah. that were orig yeah. originally written in text yeah. yeah and and it's it's by it's from that numbers we could see okay it's a test version we don't read yeah. all in audio and and we don't we still don't have an app that that actually makes it easy to to use the the audio version but still there's almost 10 percent of of the usage um uh through through audio, so yeah. so the, the drastic um, spike comes from the it, that that's when we launched the app, and when we started, uh, 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 you know, saying everything that we do on text, we also do in in an audio version. Yeah, um, yeah, and and as you can see, it just took off, and and now it's it's yeah between yeah. eighty or eighty eighty five percent of of the the content that people yeah. listen. It's really impressive. We have some. Um, I'll show just two two images of how you um, record those audio versions of of your articles, and mm -hmm. then we we'll go into some more uh, questions. People are really um, looking forward to your answers. I think. Um, so this is um, um, making audio at Zetland, right? This is one of them. I have another one, and yeah. you said somewhere we did not pivot into audio. Instead, we incorporated audio into the editorial profile in such a way that you no longer even think about it as a format. Mm. So, right. So, yeah, yeah. It's it's just another. It it's it has to do with convenience. You know, it's um, it's 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 merging our product so it fits into our members' daily life and and their yeah. way of consuming um, news and and our content. Yeah. So so for us, it's just you know we don't think of it as podcasting or uh, or in fact audio. It's just it's just another way of consuming. Uh, of consuming our stories yeah um and it and it's fun i mean people like uh doing the audio versions um because it's it's a break from from uh, what what they do uh, the yeah. so. and i've i've learned from tav tav mm -hmm. that you're uh is, is one is a ceo right now right is yeah. that right yeah. Yeah. and uh and uh, you said he's more of a tech guy and he said that the the writers the zetland writers started to write a bit differently uh once they realized they had to narrate their own articles so the text the tone of voice might have changed a bit right and the intros and yes yes i, yeah. I think it has done it has done amazing thing for the tone of voice as i yeah. said before we we like to show that that uh, our journalism is is made by humans and and the fact that you has that you that you are gonna read it aloud as a as a journalist it does something to to the way of writing the it 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 um there's a more conversational tone i think when yeah. you know that 
that you're going to, going to read this to to uh, into a microphone so that someone is going to to listen yeah. to it. And yeah, again, so it, yeah, it connects with what you said that people actually hear about a, a person of, of flesh and blood who's actually delivering a, a, a research this, wrote this, and now he's explaining this to you, bringing this into your ears. Right. Yeah, 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 and also important to say that, of course, you you can you can also do an audio version that is totally, you know, one to one uh, from from the text version. You know, saying yeah. reading reading the headline aloud, saying written <laughs> by Andreas Thorsen, and then just begin. But but we do we we all always begin our stories with sort of just a short introduction by the journalist saying, for instance, okay, this was really a hard story for me to write, or yeah. this. This has been so interesting, and I can't wait to tell you this story. Yeah. Um, so it's a small opportunity to to um, to give a sense of the the person behind the story. And it's interesting that you do this in audio, but you might not have done it uh, while writing it. You could you yeah. say that in in the introduction in in text as well, right? This was hard to get these uh, these sources, but, but yeah, you you hardly ever see that, but you hear it no. in, in audio. Yeah, 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 but but the interesting thing is that it has reflected back on the text. So yeah. so now it would it would be more natural for us, for instance, to write. Okay, someone is calling. Yeah, I'll, I'll. <laughs> and then it would, I... it would be it would for, for us today. It would be natural to to you know to 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 um, show more of the process yeah. when writing the the story because we read them. We we do the audio versions. Yeah. And about the process, and I'll just. Uh, I'll put this video in the show notes because you do live events as well. And then what I've seen from this video that a lot of your authors, your writers, they they actually give a bit more of background information and about how they came about writing their articles, doing their research, right? So you really get to meet the people and form a community. That's yeah. what the events are for, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So we should definitely, I'll put it in the in the show notes. And I'm wondering, um, did, did you still do, do this pre-pandemic, these events? Because this was a bit of a, a couple of years ago, I think this, this, yeah, the, this video is a bit is a bit old, uh, and well, we have um, there's we, we love doing live stuff. It you know yeah. because I I I fundamentally think that human beings are a species of storytellers, and you know, um, sitting around a bonfire and listening to someone telling a story that's just it's just who we are as a as a species, yeah. and. So, so taking journalism out uh, in into a live format, it just feels very, very um, meaningful. I think. So, yeah. but we have these huge, huge shows sometimes, not that often because they're very expensive and doesn't really make any sense <laughs> in a lot of ways. But we really like doing them when we take journalism into, for instance, at the Royal Theatre. Yeah. in a very large scale but also we have very small live formats um also formats that that we don't participate in as um, settlement so it's just yeah. our members uh, having a conversation with four or five other members about something that we we wrote about yeah um, yeah so that you 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 form a community as well with other maybe journalists or researchers or scientists or artists could be yeah. Yeah. No. No. The uh, when when um yeah this this specific format is just a regular settlement member. Yeah. Um. Uh, asking other members if they want to meet to meet up at a cafe oh, yeah. in their living room to yeah. discuss a specific article. Uh -huh. um, and then what happens is that we 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 send them. So we arrange. You know, we make the calendar and and makes makes it open for everyone. But yeah. then we. Also send a postcard written by the journalist who wrote the story that they are going to discuss um, and then we you know give them just a few uh, tips on how to to make that the conversation going but we're not there and I really like that so yeah. that, um, and you, you totally trust them that it that totally yeah, yeah. It could, you know it could get it could go totally wrong um, four people could show up to a fifth person that turns out to be an idiot but the funny yeah. thing is he or she is never an idiot. <laughs> never. So, uh, so, shall we go to the uh, the questions from the audience? And I've got yeah, this little yeah. banner. Let's do that. It says live Q and A. So here we go. And I'll put these. Um, there's a question from Clara. Um, mm -hmm. Hello. I have two questions. One, in your opinion, which are the most promising areas for making experiments, new products in journalism? Mm -hmm. uh, you want to have uh, question number two already, or? 
Uh, no, 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 no. Let, let me let me uh, answer that. I think. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I can just um, answer for us. For make a settler and come into that. For yeah. us, the the promising area is to use our members more. Um, to to say as, as Professor Jay Rosen from in NYU all, always say, you know, help me investigate. We, yeah. we should say that more often to our community. They help us in tons of way already with ideas and, and comments and critique. But we, we haven't up until now used them to crowdsource knowledge. And I think it's, it just has a huge potential. So that's uh, one of the promising areas in your yeah. opinion. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah totally. Okay. And then the second question, have you any tips about the business model very often, journalists have good ideas for startups, but they face big difficult difficulties. I think about how to set the right business model. Hmm. Yeah. Good well, question. Too. Maybe, maybe this is sort of a meta uh, answer, but yeah. my ans my 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 piece of advice would be take it seriously. Yeah. I, I just d don't take for granted that people want to pay for for journalism because they don't. You have to deliver the the right way of doing it, um, and. I th when, when I started as an entrepreneur, I didn't really take it seriously. I was like, maybe I, I thought, you know, the money stuff and the business stuff, that was not for me. Um, up, up until a very clever man told me, um, you can, let's say if I can translate it, um, you know, you can, more or less, he said, uh, you can, uh, Okay, he cursed. I'm not going to do that. He, he would say, you cannot be an idealist if you can't fund the idealism. And he was just so right about that. Um, yeah. So so it, it's just such a huge part of uh, delivering journalism today is also delivering the right business model. Yeah. Uh, anyway, so, so that's not a piece of advice except for... Yeah, take it very seriously. It's, <laughs> it's not something that others others should do. It's something that you, the the founder of the company, should do. And and you told me when we talked uh, last week, you told me you said some some journalists and some some journalistic organizations think that the content is the product, but you said the product, you know, it could be the app, the web, the the user experience. That is the product too. So don't think of the content as a product, but it's the sum of its parts. It's more as so a product. And content is the the thing people are paying for. Is that did I say yeah. that right? Yeah. Also because that that that's what journalism, in fact, has always been about. Not only producing content, but also being very clever about a business model and how to get the content out to the audience. You yeah. know, be. What an insane idea to get people on bikes delivering your product to their doors. Insane yeah. and, and brilliant. It's, yeah. it, it was, it's a brilliant idea. Um, that, right? Amazing, amazing. Yeah. And, and, and today we don't use people on bikes, but we, have, we, we use technology. So yeah. being very clever about that and knowing that technology and distribution is a core part of journalism also. As well, yeah. Yeah. It's not only content, it also how do you put that content out into the world so yeah. that people can experience it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think we can't emphasize this enough. And uh, as I said, me, as a, with my background in user experience design, I, I totally agree with you. So let's go to the, 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 follow, uh, the next question. And it's by Andre. Uh, can you put some more words on the approach that you think students of journalism should have to the education itself? with it perhaps being legacy and journalism being a subject on a constant move. By the way, I hope we answered both Clara's questions, but now Andre's question. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's a, it's a tough one. So uh, also because I, I'm more or less divided when it comes to these qu questions, because on one hand, let me, let me um, you know what? I don't have the right answer to this. I just know this. On the one hand, you have to stay, as I started out by, by stressing, you have to know the craft. You yep. have to know how to how to tell a story. You have to know how to um, make an angle, how to call a source. All those boring stuff, in a sense. All those very, you know, it's just there. You, you have to know all these stuff. Yep. On the other hand, uh, I think that um, at least the journalism schools that I know of are 
insanely um, oriented towards the old world. Why yeah. don't we think about business models? Why don't we think about tech when when educating journalists? And I, as I just said, I I think uh, that the tech part is, is such a huge part of the product that you're going to make. So why not learn stuff about that? Yeah. Um, yeah. And so, you, but it, it's it's not one way or the other. It's not the opposite mm -hmm. part of a of a spectrum. I think right. It's you can do it in parallel, and it doesn't. Um, um, it's not mutually exclusive, right? You can you can do it both, learn the craft and have the, the technology experience and sure. the digital skills, right? Sure. The problem is in Denmark, the, the journalism education is only two and a half years, which, which ah, is... Yeah. So, so in that sense, it's, it is a little, you know... Yeah, in the Netherlands, it's mostly four, I think, for a bachelor degree in journalism. You have to uh, study for four years. There's a lot of uh, practical experience to go into the field, right? Do internships, obviously, but yeah, I think four years, yeah. Okay, and um, oh, I hope uh, uh, Andre that uh, Leia answered your uh, your question um, satis uh, satisfying. And um, Clara says thank you, interesting thoughts, and congrats for your project, Leia. Thanks. So I think, um, and we might go back to some other uh, uh, questions from the audience. And please do um, put your your comments and questions in the in the live chat right there. But now uh, we can go to our next. Um, item on the show and that is the uh, the unboxing as we come to call it mm -hmm. and let me show because I made a, uh, a banner for that but it's more of a live demo instead of unboxing and yeah that's the unboxing and let me see because you have shall we start with the Chrome extension yeah and I'm sorry <laughs> I have to ask you again to pronounce because I can't type. <laughs> No, I, I I just love this love Chrome extension extension, and I found out that it's actually Danish. It's all in Danish. I think someone at at the Danish broadcasting um, uh, company developed it. Actually, anyways, it, huh? it's called Doctor Ludopter. It means Doctor Sound Recorder. Ludopter. Uh, and and can it's you a, share your screen. Yes, then, I um, can share it. It's it's um. Let's see. Share my screen. Share my screen. Oops. So you just download it, um, and what it does, it's it's it um, it gives you um, you you can record everything when you're in a Chrome browser, um, yeah. and it's just it's such an easy way. I, if, if I click here, here I have it here, um, yeah. then I then I can record um, you know any any video or audio stuff that you have in your Chrome browser yeah. and. Um, save it, and then you have it here as a as a file that you could just put in your in your um, um, in 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 your work. And it's so yeah. easy, yeah. So it's just yeah. such an easy way to 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 grab good stuff out on on the internet and put it in your story. Yeah, and that's actually if you're doing something with audio, or you're you're going to transcribe maybe a video or something like that, and then there will be other tools maybe to to do a speech to text. But this is very good to have in browser audio and record it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well great, great tip. Call it a hack, maybe. And then you have, you said there's another thing, and I would like to to demo a feature of Zetland when you go when you read something and they say, I, I'm I'm going to go on my bike right now, so I'll I want to listen to uh, mm -hmm. the rest of it. Can you show us? Yeah, in fact, I tr I tried to to uh, let's see, share my screen again. Um, let me just show you. Maybe it's a bit hard to see, but this is our app, um, and the the feature I want to show. This is the the front page when you when you it's, go to the app. It's not um, yet shared, right? Or are you going to share it? I didn't share it, did I? No, not yet. Okay, I'll try to. Let's see. Ah. Oh, and now uh, Leia has left us. I uh, hope she will return because we got one um, nice uh, feature, a very interesting feature of Zetland that um, Leia is going to, to demo to us. And... Um, because you might imagine that you, as she earlier said, you are reading a piece and then you need to go on your bike because you need to be somewhere and then you want to listen to it. And this feature, if I'm not mistaken, picks up where you left reading and picks it up in audio. So you don't have to scroll through the, the sort of words where you stayed reading, 
but it sort of knows where you left the article. And um, yes, Leia has come oh. back, so I can put it to the screen. Uh, no clue what happened, screen. but now I don't, I don't dare to do it. <laughs> I, I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, screen up. You can try again. It's okay. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's right. Anyways, um, I just explain my... a little bit how it works. But obviously, we need show don't tell. So if you use share screen, and you can add this the tab of uh, of your browser window, perhaps. Yeah, but where did it? go anyways this feels like a very 2021 moment <laughs> um anyway, you know what i think i would rather because now it, it disappeared anyway i think i would rather just explain what it is yeah. um because i don't want to to disappear once more so so the feature is very very simple you you have you click on our app and you read for instance half of the story while in your bed it's it's early morning and you read and you read and, re and you read and then you think okay i'm going to um, i'm going to hop on my bike and yeah. uh, and bike to school and then i want to listen to the rest and i just click on on the play button and then the the app is finds itself where you got to in the in the story yeah. um, so it's sort of a very seamless transition from text to audio and back again and it's a um, native app right so you start reading in the app and then you can switch to uh, to listening to the same article all in the same native app on ios yeah. android yeah. i presume yeah. 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 yeah 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 because because we don't we don't our audio versions are in the app so every yeah. every content is is in the uh, all content is are in the app um not in in a podcast uh, app yeah, so it's it's all in the app, but but I just like that very small feature because it shows that you know um, that the way that you want to consume us depends on your mode, what what kind of mode you're in. Yeah, 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 and, it's, and I haven't encountered that before this feature, so I would love that that maybe other publishers and uh, and newsrooms are starting to apply it to their uh, their. Um, yeah, services. Let me, let me tell you a secret. It, it it turned out it was very easy to build. We thought that this is going to be a hassle to build this uh, yeah. and, and make it seamless and and uh, um, with no bugs and stuff. But it was actually very easy to build. It took you build uh, everything in house, right? Yeah, we right. built everything in house, but but you know, built on it, but on on uh, other good people's extensions. So we integrate um, uh, solutions that that. Uh, other other uh, tech companies ha has already uh, built, so we don't build everything custom made. Um, mm -hmm. Like this way, because then we don't have. Well, for instance, we we don't have a very advanced backend because Google Docs is Google and Google Drive is just amazing. So we don't want to build that all. You know, use tons of resources to to do yeah. that. Um, yeah. So we tried only to build what what we are best at doing. Yeah. Well, that's that's good to know. So you you choose your battles, your sort of yeah. technological battles. Uh, yeah. Leia, um, we've already uh, been doing this well over forty five minutes, so I think we have to sort of wrap it up. And I've got some things that um, I think we discussed most of the things about the pieces of advice: build the tech yourself sometimes, but pick your battles. Uh, the legacy media regard content as a product. You talked about that. Mm -hmm. um, the customer centric approach listening to your um, your readers your listeners uh, before you leave is there one thing you think we haven't discussed or that you would love to say to tell our audience hmm no i think maybe maybe it's more kind of a life advice <laughs> yeah. okay. um, so there is this amazing movie strictly ballroom it's made yeah. in australia back in the 90s i think it's about a uh, about dancing anyways this movie has a fantastic motto and it's um a life lived in fear is a life half lived and i say this whenever i get the chance because it's just so so true and also when it comes to um to um making making journalism and making journalism in a new way um we cannot we cannot build our business models and our way of organizing work on fear of this is not going to work we have to to really just just do it and and hope for the best and say to us at least we tried at least we tried yeah so don't live your life in fear as a journalist yeah. 
right? Yeah. <laughs> well, that uh, that might be a bit a bit of an encouragement. It sounds heavy, and it's yeah. very true. At the but same it's time. also an encouragement encouragement to a lot of journalists, which uh, I think um, they've, uh, especially in the Netherlands right now, with all these 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 curfew riots going on, that the press is under attack sometimes, sometimes literally. So mm. I hope. They don't fear too much, but you can understand yeah. that there's a lot of things going on. That's not just in the Netherlands, obviously, in the United States. You've been in yeah. Washington last week with the inauguration, right? Yeah. So we probably don't have to tell journalists that um, that that they need need to be fearless. But these are, uh, yeah, troublesome times maybe for the industry. But it's good to have you and other innovators that are sort of uh, trying to see things in a positive way and trying to change and inform the people and listen to them because that might be one of the uh, underlying factors right that people don't feel heard and i think zetland is is one amongst many others fortunately that are listening to their audience and their users so leah uh thank you very much for joining us today yeah. and uh it was a real pleasure um we'll thanks have another guest i'm sorry thanks for having me yeah and so nice that you gave us this little hack with this Chrome extension and all the advice and all the things you, you told about Zetland. And um, um, well, I wish you, um, I wish you a very uh, a good luck, a very well um, well being. I hope you stay safe and hope Zetland grows in the way you want it to. And uh, let's keep in touch. And for all viewers, please do subscribe. And hope to see you next month with a new innovator in journalism. Thank you, Leia. Thank you, viewers. Bye. Thank you. Bye.